He's uncredited. Yes, yes, he how come he has a beginning then? Hmm? Because it says in the beginning. Exactly. Right. How does he have a beginning? Yes, An uncredited being because, doesn't have a beginning. Because you're not listening to the grammar, are you? In I the, am. Well, listen. In the beginning was the word. Not in the beginning the word became. In the beginning was the word. He already Beginning was. of what? Listen. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. All things were made. repeating yourself. All things were made by him. If all things were made by Christ, there can be no created thing that is not. Okay, these are the words of John the Baptist. Sorry, John, John the uh, John the disciple. Yes. The question. The question is this: Does the Father have a beginning? No. Does Jesus have a beginning? No. Okay. Why does he say he doesn't have a beginning in the Bible? In John, well, I just quoted. It says in the beginning. So he has a beginning. No, no, no. no. Why does he say he doesn't have a beginning? It says. It doesn't say. It says that in the beginning was the word. Yes. He was already in the beginning of what? He was already in existence. Why does it say he was already in existence? There. When no, it, it doesn't says, say that. He says in the beginning was, was the word. Was. Was. We're getting triggered for no reason. Calm down. Because you're not listening. I am listening. Was. In the beginning was the word. Not in the beginning the word became. In the beginning was the word. He was already there in the beginning. Okay. All things were made by him. Yes. That means he was in existence before anything was created. That then he It doesn't mean that. By it does. It doesn't. It does. We can say all things were okay. made by him. And then carry on. Carry, carry on then. And the word became flesh. The word became flesh. What did the word become? Flesh. Not spirit, right? Flesh. Okay, now this is a key question. Let's see if you respond to that. Who died on the cross? Jesus Christ. The Father? Je no, the Father didn't die. Jesus Christ died. The Son? The Son of God. Jesus. The Son died? Yes. The Holy Spirit? Okay, so the Father didn't die. No. The Holy Spirit did not die. No, because they never had bodies to die. Fair enough. The Son died. Yes. From these three, who is immortal? Hmm? Who is immortal? Three. Three of them. But you said the Son died? Yes. Make up your mind. Did he die or not? Of course he died. Do immortals die? Yes. <laughs> When they have a body, listen to me. He died, he was in existence in a physical body. When I die, do I cease to exist? Are you immortal? No. Why not? Your body dies. My body dies when I die, and my spirit will die on the day of judgment. So why the double standards? Why the double standards for Jesus? You said you are not immortal because your body dies and your spirit lives on. Isn't that the same thing that happened to Jesus? No. So Jesus I am not God. And I am not immortal, but Jesus is. So Jesus, Jesus wait a minute. Jesus' body died just like your body will die. Yes, but yes? Not spirit. Let me finish. Your spirit will not die either. No, not until for an unbeliever, they, their spirit will die at the day of judgment. Do you not see the contradiction in what no. you're saying? No, so, we're not seeing the reality. Okay, I think because you're not listening, let me finish the statement this time and listen carefully. Your body doesn't die, Jesus, sorry, your body dies, Jesus' body died. Yeah. Your spirit will not die, Jesus' spirit will not die. Yeah. Let's go a step further. Wait, wait. I'm not asking how you die or how Jesus has died. That's besides the point. It's not the method of death. It's the fact that death applies to both of you. Yeah. Okay. Does that apply to the Holy Spirit? What does that? No. Okay. Does that apply to the, no. the Father? No. Good. Does that apply to the Son? Yes. Good. What is the definition of immortal? Something that lives forever. Eternal. No, that's eternal. Something that I didn't ask you the definition of eternal. What is the definition of immortal? Immortal? Yeah. Not not having mortality, not having death. Exactly. Well, what means death? Not Th okay. Death. Means not subject to death. Yes. Is that fair enough? Yeah. Was Jesus subject to death? Yes. If you read the Philippians, it says that he subjected himself to it. If you still Jesus, do not understand Jesus, Jesus, the meaning of immortal, said, after having said that, then you clearly said, are suffering from something called cognitive dissonance. Jesus. That even when the truth is presented to you, Jesus even by your own words, you speak that truth. Even then, you deny it because it happens to be something that goes against your belief that Jesus Christ doesn't die. Right. Okay. But that's exactly what you believe about the crucifixion. I will just tell you what Jesus said. Okay, go on. Jesus said, no man takes my life from me. I lay it down of myself. What does that mean? It means that when he was on the cross yeah. and he was crucified, he then said, Father, into my hands I commit my spirit. So into? Into your hands I commit my spirit. Okay. He dismissed his own spirit. And Died. Which means he committed suicide. No, it means he dismissed his spirit. Well, he was either killed or he committed suicide. Which one is it? He dismissed his spirit. In was he killed or was it? Did he commit suicide? He laid his life down. That is called suicide. In my in my book, if he if you lay down your own life, it's called suicide. Okay. Now you see, this is where the word gymnastics comes in.
Put himself into the hands of his murderers. Don't Calm down. I know you're getting through. Put himself into the hands of his murderers. That is not suicide. Oh, so he put himself. So why does Philippians say he became obedient unto death? What does obedience mean? So it means that he did the Father's will in dying on the cross. So who was responsible for death? Who was responsible for his death? The Father or the Son? Neither. So nobody killed him then. He was responsible. Not the Romans. Not the Father. Not the Son. Who killed the Romans Jesus? And the Jews colluded to have him crucified on a false charge. Did he get crucified? Yes. By whom? By the Romans. Yeah. And did he die based on that crucifixion? Yes. So who killed him then? Who killed him? He submitted his spirit to God. What, what does that mean? You know, the meaning of death. It means that he had the power over life and death, which you don't. Oh, I see. So let me get this right. Let me get this right. Jesus submitted his spirit to God Almighty. Yeah. To his God, yes? Yes. Because he says he became to his God, definitely. Yes. Does God have a God? Yes. How many gods do you believe in? One. Which one is that? The one that is being worshipped? The Son and the Holy Spirit. But that's three. That's not one. He said, I go to my God and your God. His relationship with God is entirely different to my relationship. So let me get this right. So that's why he differentiates. The Father. My God and his okay. God. You're saying the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit is what you consider as God? Yeah. Yes? Now. It's consistent throughout the Bible. No, it's not actually. Jesus. Jesus says the only God is the Father. So I just showed you the one that you were reluctant to answer. The one that you twisted the scripture in order to get your trinity in there. When Jesus confirms, when Jesus confirms that the Father is the only true God. I not use the word trinity. You're using it. I didn't say trinity. I said Jesus said, you just said the trinity. only. You said to get your trinity in there. I've not used the word trinity. But your understanding. Okay, how do you define the trinity? One God, three persons. And how is that different to your belief? Hmm? How is that different to your belief? I'm not using the word trinity. You're using but now you're getting into semantics. Your understanding is the same, is it not? This is called semantics. What do you understand the trinity to be? Debate? The same thing you understood. You, you Just like you said, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit are one being, God. Yes. That's what I understand. Yes. So that is what you believe, the trinity. Whether you like the word or not. Well, you're using the word. Okay. Which word would you want me to use? I would say that we have one God existing in three modes. That's not in the Bible. The modes is not in the Bible. Is the Three modes not in the Bible. Neither is the word Trinity. I agree. So which word do you want to use? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God. That's all. By the way, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God. It's three gods, not one. One God. What does it say? Three are one in the Bible. Show me what it says. These three are one. It says clearly that the Holy Spirit. I didn't ask you how many names. I asked you how many beings. Why does it say the person one, person two, if, person three is one being? If the Bible tells us there is one God, which it definitely does. Yes. As much as the Quran says that is one God. Yeah. And then it refers to Jesus as God, it refers to the Holy Spirit as God, and it refers to the Father as God. It refers to the Jewish judges as God. It refers to uh, Moses as God, to the Pharaoh. I can give you many more. How many gods do you believe then? There is one God. Which one is that? Moses? Uh, the one Jewish judges? In, by the way, this is John 10, 34. Jesus, Jesus himself said, He are gods, and the, and the scripture cannot be broken. John 10, 34, when the Jewish picked up stones to throw at him, yes, when he said, I am the father of one, he picked up stones and to throw at him. Jesus said, for what good works that I've done that you want to stone me? Yes, and they say, not for the good works, for you being a mere man, are Make claiming himself. to be God. Yeah. Yes, so what was Jesus' response to that? Jesus' response to having you read what the scriptures say about you are God. Who are the gods? That was people. So people are called gods as well? They're called gods in a much lesser sense. It doesn't say lesser, you added those words in there. Well, you see, this is what the, well, the, the tr tr well, Trinitarians so, do. So, so. When it comes to anyone other than Jesus, they automatically become lesser. So, but Jesus himself says, my father is greater than I. I can of myself do nothing. So the man who's saying that all authority was given to Jesus, and he's the one who was responsible for all things. He was the one who created everything. Yeah. All of a sudden says, I can of myself do nothing. John 10, 30. Yes? Yeah. How can someone who created everything, who had been given all authority, is now telling you he by himself, that means without his God, can do nothing. Because he is God incarnate. God who has laid aside those attributes. Lays, laid aside meaning emptied himself? Emptied himself. So you got an empty God now. He was saying keep the commandments of God. That's what you have? Unfortunately, empty without glory, because empty without power, empty to even get his own, his own, what do you say, creation, stopping them from killing him. Because in fact, empty to the point that when Jesus fell on his face in the Garden of Gethsemane, his own prayer got rejected. Even though 
he said by, by by the will of the father and not by his will by the way you know every single prayer even your prayer is always with the will of the father never by your will so what you what Jesus was saying is it goes without saying that he was in fact submitting to the will of the father even when he's praying but his main prayer was what to take the suffering we have the cup of suffering in other words to save him from the crucifixion this was his main prayer the bit that comes afterwards goes without saying that he's submitting to the father whether he accepts his prayer or he rejects it three times Jesus prayed with his forehead on the floor yes this is him showing submission it shows that you know which is the most important part in a human being's body his head when you submit that most important part of your body on the floor now you're saying that my I'm lowering myself I am humbling myself to a point which is equal to your feet where your feet step I'm lowering myself to that when I humble myself to the Almighty God to the God of Jesus the God of Abraham the God of Moses and the God of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this shows us that Jesus is so showing you that he's God but he's showing you that he's a servant Jesus himself said the servant is not the master the master is greater than the servant if Jesus became the servant that means he became lower than God Almighty and, and not equal this is not co-equality and Christians have no problem with believing that the son empty God to the father we have no problem with that it's <laughs> Orthodox Christianity believes that the son is subject to the father but within the relationship of the community there's a priority for God so loved the world that he sent his son there was a sending and there was a coming but Christ willingly submits himself to the father's will and they live in perfect harmony and relationship the Holy Spirit comes from the father through the son and the son comes from the father to us so there's no co-equality you agree there's perfect equality how is that co-equality when one submits to the other all the time there is equality in a, in a Christian marriage where the husband I'm not about marriage I'm, I'm talking about authority of the father and the son uh, I am giving you an analogy what about a marriage in a marriage how God is the biblical, biblical the husband is the head of the wife but that is equality it's not equality it's not equality how is the head equal to the one who is subject to him how is that equal is it equal in authority because all you're thinking of is subjection and authority and power that's what I'm not talking about a God you know you know the irony is I'm talking about a God who lives by love my friend the irony is this you are using terms which are not in the Bible I'm using terms which are in the Bible he subjects himself to God until eternity in first Corinthians 15 24 so this is after he's conquered death after he's conquered his enemies yes the father sorry God Almighty is the one that is subject to it's not the term used in that is not father the term used that is God so wait 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 wait, wait a minute wait a minute you use terms like different modes you use terms like different persons you use terms like other terms which are external like persons which are outside the Bible I use the terms which are in the Bible and you're saying I'm using these terms do you see do you not reflect on that my friend if Jesus is always submitting himself even until the end until after he's conquered death and his enemies and he's gone back when he gives his kingdom back to his God he subjects himself to his God there's no problem with that so can God subject himself to anyone but within, answer the question within a relationship we have father son and holy spirit that in perfect relationship the father is the one who initiates um, in sending the son the son is the one who commissions and does by coming the holy spirit is sent from the father does the father sorry does god submit himself to anyone yes the son submits himself i didn't ask you the son does god wait a minute listen to the question i'm not asking about the father son and the holy spirit so do not divide God into three persons without doing that I haven't divided God into three well you have he said I've the son united them into three persons so you what I've united them into three so how is it uniting when the son is always submitting to the father how is it uniting I see one is higher authority than the other is the, yeah, yeah because we only think of power I'm talking about authority I'm talking about authority all authority is given to me in heaven and earth and whose authority is over the one Jesus which is 
that, who is that? Who is that person to Jesus? That's the Father. That's his God. It's his Father. That's his God. It's his Father. Okay, let's read the Bible to him because you seem to be. It's his Father. You, you seem to be going and and say God. Finish it. Father is God. Why you say he's God? Exactly. In First Corinthians eleven three. Point is that Christianity believes that there is a relationship between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What is the relationship? And the Father takes the initiative, and the Son commissions the Father's initiative, and the and the Spirit acts in the power to achieve those things. Okay, you're just repeating yourself now. Is there a relationship of God and servant? Listen, no, listen. No, it is not. Okay, so you're telling me Jesus was not the servant of God. I'm not telling you he's not a servant. Of was he the servant of God? Of course he was the servant. So don't say there wasn't a relationship between master and servant. There is a relationship between master and servant. And what is the relationship Jesus says is that between the master and servant? Who is the greater, the master or the servant? That's in a different context. It's in the same Bible. That's in the context. In the same Bible. That is the context where he is talking to the disciples yes. about master and servant. Exactly. So is there a difference between the master and the servant? In the context between me and God, yes. In the, in the context between Christ and the Father, it's an entirely different situation. Okay, in the, uh, let's, let's answer this question. In the context between the Father and Son, are they the same co-equal in authority? Yes, they are. The one issues the initiative and the other one carries it out. So who is the master? There's no master. In there is. You just said one issues the command and the other carries it out. Look at the way he said initiative. It is, you know what he's using in the Bible? The term command. The reason he's embarrassed to say that is because he knows he knows the servant is not equal to the master. Even if it's between the disciples and Jesus and between the father, sorry, between Jesus and God. Do you know there's a, just, you know, there's a, in a marriage, who is the head of the woman? Who is the head of the woman? What does the head mean? Head means the one in authority. Does it? Okay, you tell me what does it mean. Well, what's the head of a No, you tell me what the head means now. What is the head I've given you my answer, you tell me what does it mean. The head is again an initiator. Command. The one who gives command. You think of the head of a stream. It's the source of life. The man is the source of life into a man. He is the spirit. Source of life? What does it mean? What do you mean source of life? Bringing spiritual life into the marriage. He's like the priest in the home. So when you say that, when you say the, the president... I don't order my wife around. I didn't tell you order your wife around. Maybe she does to you. You're talking about... <laughs> I don't know, by the way. What, I, what I'm saying is that... Sorry, I didn't mean that. Okay? What I'm saying is this. If you're talking about the head of state, what do you understand by it? Head can mean different things. In, different in the context of the head of state. Head does not mean ordering the chief dog in a pack or anything like that. What does the head mean? Just answer that. Well, the, the head of a stream is the source of... The head of the state. What does it mean? The head of the state is somebody that has been given authority by the people who voted for him. Yeah, so does he have power over the people? If you're, if you're, no. No? No. So you're telling me... No, he doesn't. You're telling me, wait a minute. You're telling me the Prime Minister has no power over the people at all? Wow. Which democracy this guy's living in? No, he doesn't. The whole idea of giving him power is so that he has authority over you over certain things. Not, obviously not breaking the law, but he has... So the that he, authority is in the law. Of course, just like Jesus has authority is under the law of God. He acts, the Prime Minister does not have authority over him. Okay. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 11. 3 in order to understand this. Let's get away from the semantics and look at the passage in the Bible. I'll give you one passage, you explain this to me. The head of all men is Christ. The head of the woman is man. And the head of Christ is God. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 3. Explain that to me, the passage. It's what I'm talking about, about the stream of life, of authority. The head of all men is Christ. Explain that. I'll just explain it to you. Tell me. I said it's the source of life, the stream of life, like the head of a river. So the source of all man is Christ. Uh, you right? Yes. The source of all man. He's brought all men to the life or possibility of life by his resurrection. Okay. Now let's use the same. Let's use the same passage and let's see how he explains the next verse. Let's see if he actually changes the meaning of that. Because according to the first, let me get the right. He is the head of all man means he is the source of all life of man. Now the next passage in the same sorry in the next verse in, uh, sorry the next statement in the same verse the head of the woman is man explain that I've explained it to you about five times but you haven't listened once again I have said it's similar to the head of a stream the source of protection of care of, uh, of all those sort of things okay so in the case of Jesus it is a source of life yes. 
same terminology but different interpretation. In the case of the woman and ma a man in a marriage, he's a source of what? Spiritual life. Yeah. Now, are you saying the woman has no spiritual role no. to play? No. So who plays a higher role? I wouldn't say there's a higher role. So why is the man the head then? Who sinned first in the tradition? Ah, if now comes the misogyny. If we go to this now comes the misogyny. We see that the first person who disobeyed God was Eve. But throughout the Bible, the one who is blamed for sin is Adam. No. For the Bible, how, why is it Adam who's, who's blamed? Even Paul blames her. The reason the women have to cover the head with the head covering is because the same passage, 1 Corinthians 11. By one man, sin entered the world. It's always man that carries the blame for sin entering the world. Now give me the whole passage. By one man, sin entered the world. 11, 1 Corinthians 11, just bring it up. Okay, so you're telling me, you're telling me. In the Bible, Adam bears the responsibility. Sin okay. Entering the Once world. again, but the woman was the first to actually eat. Yeah. He bears the responsibility. By the way, do you know in the Quran both are blamed equally? Yeah. Unlike the Bible, you, where you said you read the Quran. I have read. Have you read that we, it the Muslims? Long, it was a long time ago, and I can't remember. Fine before. enough. I'm telling you what we understand from the Quran's narrative: that both Adam and Eve were equally responsible for their fall. Okay, for their error, for their. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not saying that's a Bible. I'm saying that's a Quranic narrative, yeah, yeah. okay?